Hey everybody, it is Lawrence. And I want to talk to you today about something that has come up a lot in questions when I've been working with people in sessions. And the question is, how do you make time for sex? So let me first tell you why this is important. You need to make time for sex. So it's going to allow you, by listening to this video, it will allow you to begin to take control of your time, and specifically your time for pleasure. It will also prevent you from losing control of the sexuality in your relationship, and of course, it'll help you help others, your significant other, by creating something that values the time you spend with them because sometimes when we're not able to express our sexuality it really hurts our partners so once you get your hands around how to make more time for sex you'll have this feeling of like a sense of accomplishment like you've really done something quite wonderful because honestly you have so if you don't take the time for sex you already know this it, it, it's like a law of diminishing returns where you start to feel more and more helpless, out of control. I know uh, a lot of married couples who get into these cycles where they're not going to have sex for two, three months at a time. And there's actually neuroscience before, you know, in all of this. So for the purpose of this video, I want to define not making time for sex as this. What it literally means is you are not making it sex a priority and pleasure a priority. And there are reasons why this happens in life. One of the most common reasons is because we are really, we believe sort of as a culture that sex is a bad thing, right? So there's some moral aspect of like sex and pleasure being bad. And, and, and for a lot of people, they feel like, you know, if sexuality was really unleashed and they were really expressing it, or if their partner knew what their real desires were, that that, that would create this kind of um, almost like a shame. So part of what I want you to realize is, is number one, that we have to prioritize sex. So that's the first step I'm going to give you. Make it a priority. There was a, a book I read where they talked about, you know, it actually was a science experiment that was done in my physics class. Um, but I've heard it quoted many times, but in physics class, we had this, you know, lots of little pebbles and a few big rocks. And the, the problem solved was like, how do you get all of these things into one container? And uh, it turns out if you put the small pebbles in first, which seemed to be the obvious thing, or you put only um, the big rocks in first, none of those things worked. There tended to be this balance of, you know, get the big things in in your life. And one of them needs to be sex for a number of reasons, which I'll go into in another, in another video. But including connection, intimacy, all of those, but I'll go more in depth. But you, by, by, by making sex a priority and, and making that one of the big rocks of your life, like you wouldn't, you know, not brush your teeth. You wouldn't not shower, you wouldn't not eat well, hopefully. So it's, it's really important that you prioritize, like you go to the gym, you know, you prioritize the time. Now here's the thing, you're gonna get quick results if you make sex a priority. And if you follow these steps that I'm going to tell you, um, it will make a difference. Like you, you know, you will see, okay, so the first thing I'm telling you is make sex a priority. Make your pleasure a priority. Make your partner's pleasure a priority. Part of how you need to do that is you need to change what's going on up here. If you're like most people, what happens is, is you have some pretty strong beliefs, like I said, about pleasure. And many of us actually have fear of pleasure. Now here's the thing. I can guarantee you if you're watching this and you're doing a little research to find this video, you're one of the people who has had fear of sex. Now, fear of sex is very subtle. It's not really so much sex, but the pleasure, because we have to move to a very uh, open, relaxed place in order to really get into our pleasure. And that's what's so interesting about this. So 
gotta, gotta place the big rocks. The first big rock is I'm going to make time. Number two, realize that you're gonna have resistances to making time. Why? Because we are afraid of the vulnerability that we feel when we really release to our pleasure. And sometimes if you have a lot of, you know, moral issues or religious issues, you may actually have a resistance to feeling good. So it's very important that you begin to, to actually shift your entire paradigm around pleasure. The next thing is, is that it's really important that, that in a partnership that both people share the, the, uh, the work, if you will, the housework, things that are mundane in relationships. Um, it's really important that you share that work, that you, that you trade off, that you help, because one person doing something can really actually be extremely problematic if they're the only person, you know, taking time to clean and do dishes and cook or, you know, whatever the traditional things are, you know. So what happens is we, we create this separation as opposed to teamwork. So the other thing I'm going to encourage you to do is create like a teamwork. Like we're going to do pleasure together. And one of the ways you get that time to have pleasure is you also do things together that help you get that extra time. Cleaning, laundry, cooking, you know, stuff. The mundane stuff of relationships can actually be a great hindrance to sexuality and the expression of pleasure. The other thing is basic, basic things make sex a priority in your life. It's so basic. I've said it already, but I'm saying it again. Make sex a priority. Make your pleasure a priority. You know, find that thing that you really love about expressing your sexuality with your partner because you can't make something a priority if you don't make time for that priority. So if you, if, you, if you don't value it enough to make time, then, there, then it won't happen. It doesn't just fall off the truck. So, so set, that, set that priority. You know, share in, share in the, the, the mundane things of life. Really work towards each other and, and, and really have that deep desire to see your partner's orgasm, their pleasure, their freedom, their, their joy, their bliss. You, you, you know, it's just so important in life. The, the next thing that I want to talk about is the, this sort of this sense of that, of what I'll call deservingness, which is the, you know, do you deserve, do you actually deserve to feel good in your body? Again, that starts here. So many of the things that we have that happen in life happen because we have some belief in our head that limits our capacity to experience so I really encourage you to, to, to tonight to find a way to, to put those big rocks in first. And one of those big rocks has to be making time. It, even though it seems like, you know, love should fall off the truck and sex should fall off the truck. The reality is if you do the statistics, if you do the math, what you're going to find is that the amount, the chance that two people are feeling sexually active at the same place in the same time where their cycles are in alignment and they're feeling rested and they're not too stressed out and there's actually, you know, in the mood, that that is such a rare thing and most, m many couples are depending on that sort of natural thing to happen. But look, you make dates for all kinds of things. You don't just show up to, you know, a a an appointment. You actually create a time and everybody agrees we're gonna meet at this place at this time. And I really encourage you to do that same thing. Make a date. Make a date to connect on a regular basis. And depending on how frequently both of you need it, really set that up. Maybe it's once a week or twice a week or three times a week. But we know that people who have more sex and more connection feel better, live longer, have more fun. So that's my tip today. Thank you so much for asking your questions. Keep your questions coming. And... Uh, until the next time we speak, I want to wish you more love, more pleasure, more intimacy, and a lot more fun in bed. See you soon. It's Lawrence.